Smith Middle. Brownlow Middle is Jimmy Bartell. Matthew Lloyd. Port Adelaide arrive in Melbourne on Friday in search of their 10th win in a row, which is remarkable in an AFL season. They take on the Dogs, who need a big win, Jimmy, uh, here at Marvel Stadium on Friday night. And I've got some worries about the Western Bulldogs. We take a look at their disposal winners against Geelong in their last game. And they had the, of the top 10 disposal winners, they had nine of them, yet they lost the key stats that matter, and that's their inside 50s. So, Lloydie, when you're seeing all this, are they getting them across half-back? Is it too yeah. many one-twos? How's this hurting their ball movement going forward? Well, look at that. Their mm. inside 50 retention is 17th, so they win a lot of ball, but it's not they're either missing the goals or they're not getting that last kick inside 50. And we'll take a look at some of them uh, against the Geelong Cats. And this one just has to lower the eyes. Everything's going to Norton and Eugle Hagen in the air. Long bombs in, in long. Got to hit those targets, but yet he tries to hit Eugle Hagen on a lead. Just didn't need to do that. They make things more difficult than they need to. Here's another one. So if I'm a forward, I'm not sure when they're going to kick the footy. So they do mess around with it a little bit. I'd love to see that one come through the corridor. Yet they go, Jim, straight to the numbers of the Cats where they're, they're setting up behind the footy. So they're doing all the hard work. They're doing a lot right, but they just cannot hit, hit the scoreboard. Just need to be a little bit more predictable, Lordy. I've gone for Port Adelaide. We're a real big opportunity and where their big improvements come from off the back of uh, you are talking about, Lordy, how they've got their nine wins in a row, uh, ten wins in a row they're going for. But they're going for nine in a row at Marvel. Horn Francis, I've gone the double barrel names in this side with double the effort. Horn Francis, Power Pepper and Burn Jones has moved forward. You look, these, all these guys are, are great or star players at underage and even Burn Jones has been an All-Australian. But look at this relentless effort against good sides. That's both Horn Francis and Power Pepper. They're number two in the competition in, in tackles inside forward 50. They're just relentless. As senior players buying into what Kenny Hinckley wants them to do, plays the game in the front half. A big talking point is Rory Love in his first year at the Western Bulldogs. And I don't think this is why he came to the Western Bulldogs to play on the wing. So he's on the wing there. He's been averaging eight disposals over his past month. And then I think his effort, he, he came to the Dogs because he was a dominant forward for the Fremantle Dockers last year. So he's playing on a wing some moments. He's losing key battles. I think they've got to straighten up the side and get him for supporting English in the ruck and playing forward. And I look at a guy like Jeremy Finlayson, who they got for nothing. This is a type of role I think Lobb should be playing. So playing as a forward and then pinch hitting in the ruck. It's almost the old traditional centre forward. You get up the ground to give space behind you for the full forward. Or as we're seeing in these edits, to work really hard back against your direct opponent and get inside forward 50. You can be the chop out in the ruck. If it's Rory Lobb, you're giving English a bit of a breather so he can stay on the ground. But you have a look at Finlayson here for, for Port Adelaide. This is something he's improved throughout his career, his work rate been able to build up his tank which is allowing him to stay in contest but also get those repeat efforts if he gets high up the ground which we saw he can get back and be another option inside forward 50. More gut feel I'm going the dogs only gut feel what about you Jim? yeah I think Port Port are low flying at the moment I'm going the power. Sunday night it's Carlton take on the Bombers uh, big favourites the Bombers in this game and it's an issue for Carlton is their goal scorers Jimmy so of this you look at it so they're, they're Fifth for defence, so they're defending quite well. But for scores, they've only their fifteenth, and they've only got six goal kickers per week, which is the seventeenth rank in the competition. So if you can stop pretty much Kerno, mm. you're halfway home to winning this game of footy. Yeah, I agree with you, Lloyd. I know we're focused on Kerno, Mackay, and even their forward group, but I think it starts further back. We always talk about you all defend together. Well, you've all got to attack together, and I think it's coming from their back half a bit why they can't score. And when you look at their shot chart, they take shots wide and they're slow and deep. This is what I want to say. This is when they're playing their best footy. The forward handball through the corridor in between the logos. So we'll see shortly. Look at this. Geelong are just in retreat mode. Radical E has got to come up. We get the easy one. And do you know how you get good conversion and good scores? Kicking them from the top of the goal square or between the two point posts. It's this speed out of the back half. We have a look at Newman here. In recent weeks, Carlton will probably take this one here. And it's slow, which would normally allow Geelong to come back. But this option, which comes back up the middle here uh, to Doherty, Carlton would normally go wide in recent time. Keep the ball in the middle. You've actually won that battle. Geelong are scrambling. So be more adventurous. This conservative ball use is actually killing Carlton. And it's mean they're getting shots so wide and so deep. Because of the speed of the ball, we actually see Carlton will get an out number for the footy. 10 metres out from goal here. I think it's Owies who, who ends up on the end of it from Silvani's little handball. Out number four to the footy. 
As yeah. we, Jim, and Jim, they're not playing at their strengths, are they? So in this situation, Saad, give him the handball, which they're not, they're not honouring the handballs, are they? So it's becoming predictable. I touch on the conservative nature. So they're last in the competition from turning D50 into forward 50. They're actually ranked 16th as far as using the ball coming out of their back half through the corridor. Look at this. You can be better than this. These are two and one drills. Draw Cozzy Pickett, even though he's quick. If not, take the space up the middle. The first instinct here, swing it wide. Yeah. And then Melbourne, even if they lose that contest, Melbourne, they've got time to come back. They've got time to flood back on Kerno and Mackay. And that's why we're getting such low scores. Yeah, Michael Voss spoke about them playing tight football. They've got to take more risks mm -hmm. on Sunday night. And speaking of risks, the Bombers play with there. And that's how it's going to be a real struggle for Carlton mm -hmm. if they don't take Draper risks because you've got players mm -hmm. like Draper's tapping it on a, on a dime to his mm -hmm. players. And, and they're explosive, Floyd Merritt Floyd and Floyd Martin Floyd and these Floyd types. Floyd Big opportunity there for Fairston. If they can get Draper and the ball on, on the outside, whether it be from a hit out or forcing the ball. Merritt, Perkins, all these midfield Stringer. Through. Stringer. Yeah. Look at this. On the outside, they'll keep Carlton on the inside in the tight bubble. Uh, and Merritt, again, we highlight, he'll just cut you to pieces if he gets a couple of metres and facing towards goal. But this outside ball movement, Martin is uh, another one uh, there as well. Mm. They've just got speed on the game. If they get it on the outside, Carlton inside, it's an game. You're confident game. they win the Dons? I keep waiting for Carlton to have the, the big statement game. So I'll go for Essendon. Yeah, Essendon should win that one. And the last one, obviously, the King's birthday game should be sensational. It's Melbourne and the Collingwood Footy Club. And another team that's struggling with scoring is the Demons. So they've just got to get this part right. It's been a struggle but for the last four years apart from their premiership year. So they have the most inside 50s in the comp, yet they're the 12th ranked scoring side and kicks retention rate is ninth. So we'll take a look at some of those entries going inside forward 50 and it's too predictable. So they often just kick it long and teams just love that. You know, double, triple team and they're about to come up against the best intercept player in the game and that's Darcy Moore. Nathan Murphy's very good at it too. But it's just far too predictable at Melbourne. Yeah, you've got to honour these little leads. And once you honour the first one, it actually draws the opposition up. It means they have to defend it. Good sides like Collingwood at the moment, until you show them that you're going to hit that one up, they'll just keep peeling back. They'll just watch the kicker. They won't worry too much about their direct opponent. They'll keep them in their vision, but they'll just see the game. Darcy Moore is just watching the game in front of him and going after footy. What I want to see from Melbourne, I think you always look for a side who's done something well against the top sides, and that's Brisbane. And Brisbane are excellent at the, the coal faces, they say. So we, we showed these edits uh, early in the year. This is Brisbane, and also Brisbane bringing up their key forwards. This is Hipwood and Danaher. Go at the contest, come forward, and try and get the smalls out the back with a bit of speed. Try and get in behind these high-marking uh, defenders for Collingwood and force Collingwood to run back a little bit. So if you're Melbourne at different stages, bring up Van Royen a bit higher, bring up whatever tool, whether it's the resting Ruckman, to give you that relief and get a bit of a contest. Take care of the contest, but surge it forward because we know Collingwood are proactive. They love to come forward from behind the footy. So if you can get the ball moving your way, almost shifting the needle a little bit, as we see here, this is a bit of a template. Van Royen up the ground. Just play on, play with speed and, until... Uh, so Spargo, Neil Bullen... Yeah, you uh, want these pick guys, it, pick these it. Guys, yeah. uh, even Bailey Fritch at different times. He gets on, on the end of it here. But you get Collingwood charging back. They can't look at the game and come forward. They've got to turn around and defend their opponent. Yeah, and bring speed on the ball, high pressure against Collingwood. But I just think they'll be too quick, too good, the pies. Um, I think they win it and win I, it quite well. I just don't know how you tip against Collingwood at the moment. Ed, the best side in it, you can't lose. So I couldn't can't hear lose. you say best that. Best side in the comp, you can't, can't so lose. Th who are? Who are? You are. <laughs>